Good morning, folks. We're starting today with ESA's YouTube page. This is a small piece of their Mars Floodwater presentation, sped up by four. You can find the link to it in the About tab below this video, along with all the other resources for the news. Now we're coming to Dr. Phillips SpaceWeather.com. Using his time machine function, we're looking at the all-sky fireball counts for the last two weeks. These vary a lot from night to night, as they always do. Remember, we expected a potential minor dusting from Ison's trailing stream today as we cross its incoming trajectory into the inner system. And while we certainly have not seen any major outbursts that would make you jump out of your seat, one of the fireballs we recorded last night has a definitively parabolic and non-stable incoming trajectory, which not only comes in from the night side, but shows that trajectory is right at the sun, making it close to Ison's actual trajectory. As with before, the best we can do on this is maybe, but that reading on this date does make me smile. Real quick, there is a west coast uptick right now with two fours in the last day, complementing the Middle East uptick yesterday and some fives on either side of the Pacific. While we're out west, just look at how little snow is there. That's good for you warm weather worms, but bad for breakout wildfires and spring vegetation. Great image here from NASA's Earth Observatory. It's like eerie, but we also get the MODIS combined infrared readings to differentiate the ice from the snow. Looking at tropical development, the potential puts Australia and the islands in the far Southeast Asia area on watch. They just watched Ian come through Tonga and dissipate after missing New Zealand. Luckily, the storm system at Northern Australia now is already on land, so it can't strengthen too much. The high between nations keeping the rest of you guys mostly dry. Let's now look at Europe. We have seen a tornado, high winds, sleet, and that low is still well offshore. It's curling in now. Let's come to the Americas and reveal the western flow as the strongest again. Small low in cahoots at the Great Lakes. Eastern states and up to the north will see most of the rain and snow today. Going to Gamma Bursts, we took one yesterday as the news was uploading. Now let's fully diagnose yesterday's coronal mass ejection. Cactus is updated, and in the evening news we said to expect a minor impact on the 17th or the 18th. NOAA's Enlil updated now to show an impact late on the 17th, while NASA's Enlil shows impact starting a bit earlier in the day. Solar flaring remained low for yet another day with sunspots on the disk looking very unimpressive. No major complexion to the departing groups, and the incomers do not yet look too menacing. The solar wind speed is calming fast here this morning, and the geomagnetics are following suit. Earth, Mars, and Venus all magnetically connected to the western limb, departing now with Mercury on the east. You can see the incoming northern coronal hole on the left there. That's it turning in up north, darker than the surrounding areas, with the southern opening departing now. Got some shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.